Oke, okay, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the international webinar event, Cyber Security in a Connected World. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Novita and I will host you for today event. Now, let me welcome our special guest for today. Welcome to the Honorable Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso as a Rector of Stecom University Indonesia, to the Honorable Professor Norul Hassan, PhD, as a Head of Department Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, Computer Science and Engineering Cybersecurity from Arunai Engineering College, India, To the Honorable Mr. Ereso Negi, as a lecturer in management department from Oromia State University, Estimor. To the Honorable Miss Charlina Helen Napurna Masari Panjaitan, MCOM, as a lecturer of information and engineering department from Stecom University, Indonesia. And last but not least, also to the Honorable guests and audience today. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes here. Today's session is being streamed on Universitas Techcom YouTube channel. And for today even, we will start with Indonesian National Anthems and continue with the opening speech by Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso as a regular obstacle to university. In the next session, we'll be... We will begin the main event presentation by our special guest for today. Continue with the Q&A session and take a picture for documentation. And last time is closing. First, we will sing our national anthems for the Miss Kinan. You can start this session today. Thank you. We will invite the most responsible person for the stake to the conduction this skill international event for give an opening speed. Yeah, for Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso, the time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Novita. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all distinguished guests and all participants, audience for joining us. Today in international webinar, and I'm honored to thanks for the honorable Professor Nurul Hassan, PhD, as head of Department Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, Computer Science and Engineering, Cyber Security, Aruna Engineering College, India, and Alessonegi. Lecture in Management Department, Oromia State University, Estimor, and Serena Helena Puruna Masari Panjaitan, MCOM, a lecturer of Informatics Engineering Department, Stecom University, Indonesia. And I welcome you to 
this international webinar with the title Cyber Security in a Connected World. And in today's interconnected digital landscape, you know that cyber security has emerged as one of the paramount concerns of our time. The proliferation of digital technologies and the exponential growth of interconnected devices have revolutionized how we live, work, and communicate. However, with this advancement come unpredicted challenge, particularly in self uh, guarding our, uh, our digital assets and privacy. As we navigate the fast expanse of our digitally interconnected world, the importance of cyber security cannot be overstated. And today, virtually uh, every aspect of our lives, from personal communications to critical infrastructure and relies heavily on interconnected network. While this connectivity brings unpredicted opportunities, it also exposes us to uh, some significant risks. And in this webinar, we aim to delve into the intricacies of cybersecurity, exploring the challenge we face and innovate solutions that are emerging to address them. We have gathered expert, uh, lecturer, and audience, and students, uh, and leaders worldwide to share their insight, experience, and best practice in safeguarding our digital ecosystem. As we embark on this journey together, let us remember that cybersecurity is not just a technological issue, but a shared, shared responsibility that requires collaboration, uh, knowing each other, uh, situation awareness, and proactive uh, measures from all the stakeholders. Whether uh, uh, cybersecurity professional or someone uh, which, it, which is new in this field, uh, there's always something valuable that, uh, for us to learn and contribute uh, contribute. And this work, webinar uh, serves as vital platform for expert practitioners and stakeholders from across the global to coverage, exchange insight, and collectively address the multi-phase dimension of cybersecurity. And from uh, mitigating cyber threat and vulnerabilities to promoting digital literacy and resilience, our discussion today will have the uh, way for innovate, uh, getting a new solution or strategies or navigating in uh, something about these uh, complexities of this uh, connected world. And also knowledge sharing as well. I, con I encourage all of us to actively engage, collaborate, and harness the power of collective intelligence. Let us seize the opportunity to force meaningful connection, foster collaboration, and chart course towards a more secure and resilient digital future. Assurance, thanks our esteemed speaker, panelists for this invaluable expertise and contribution, and also want to thank the organizing uh, committee, the International uh, Office uh, of the State University and other University as well, for the planning and effort for bringing this international, uh, web, uh, international webinar uh, to fruition. Furthermore, I also thank for the sponsor partners and also support for the from the audience uh, for commitment to uh, promoting 
cyber security awareness and preparedness. Once again, I welcome you to uh, all to this enlightening and enrichment uh, webinar. And today's discussion inspiring uh, inspire us uh, innovating uh, innovate solutions and contribute to building a safer and more secure cyber ecosystem for uh, the future generation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for your for the conduction, Dr. Joseph. And we will go to the main event for our audience. If you have any question for the speaker, please add them to the chat or you can use or you can raise your hand. Today's session is bit its presenter will have about 30 minutes for the presentation. Now let me welcome our first presenter, Miss Cerlina from Stecom University, Indonesia. For Ms. Cerlina, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the time. Good mor uh, Good afternoon to the Honorable our Rector Universitas Tekong, Dr. Joseph, and the Honorable Professor Nurul Hasan and Mr. Ereso, and all the participants today. Today, I'll share to you my topic which is about one type of cybercrime called phishing. Maybe you already know about it, uh, but I hope you never get this kind of cybercrime. Well, I will share my screen first. Okay, can you see my presentation? Okay, yes. Sir? Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. First, uh, I'll talk. I will talk about the connected world. Uh. If we talk about connected world. Uh, the internet is a network system that allows the world to be connected. We can say that a connected world is a condition where there is a digital ecosystem that allow instant exchange of data, information, and communication uh, between devices or individuals and organizations throughout the world. There are so many examples about how the world can be connected. Uh, we can see the Internet of Things or IoT, global connectivity, e-commerce, and online uh, social media, and the growth of cloud technology. Uh, there are some examples of technological advancement that create a connected world. So we can say that uh, internet connecting, uh, so we can say that internet connecting the world digitally, or we can say uh, when the area, when an area is not connected to the uh, internet, that area can be said to be disconnected from the digital world. So the internet make us connected with all users around the world digitally. Uh, this connection is no longer limited by space. So the these connections can also make us connect with people we didn't, uh, that we didn't know before. And it is possible that we connect with people who have uh, maybe bad, bad intentions like scammers or uh, Thief, uh, ident identity thief. Okay. Uh, in my next slide, if we talk about uh this condition, uh, when we talk about the connected world, we also have to talking about the security. In our interestingly, uh, in our interestingly connected world, where information flows freely over the internet and devices 
are constantly communicating with each other. Cybersecurity has become a critical concern uh, to us. Uh, this uh, in the journal, in the journal titled Cybersecurity Trends, Issues, and Challenges, it is stated that in today internet connected world where technologies underpin almost every facet of our society, cybersecurity and forensic specialists are increasingly dealing with wide ranging cyber threats in almost real time conditions. Uh, the capability to detect, analyze, and defend against such threats in a real-time condition is not possible without employment of uh, of threat uh, intelligence, big data, and machine learning technique. Okay. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, when we talk about cybersecurity, it is also relates to cybercrime. Um, when when we talk about uh, cybercrime, it will always be associated with hackers and crackers. But what they actually do? Here, there are several cybercrimes committed by hackers and uh, crackers. Uh, we can we can see in this in this uh, in this screen number one uh, is identity identity theft uh, identity theft is an authorized acquisition and use of personal okay number one identity theft Unauthorized acquisition and use of personal information such as name, social security numbers, or financial details to commit fraud or other criminal activities. Number two is uh, number two, phishing. Uh, this uh, this topic will be detailed for us. Uh, phishing is deceptive attempts to acquire sensitive information such as usernames, password, and credit card details by posing as a trustworthy entity in electronic communication. Number three, rans ransomware. Ransomware is malicious software that encrypts a user's files or system, demanding payment for their release. Number four, uh, there is cyber espionage, covert activities conduct through digital means to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information or intellectual property. And then um, malware. Malware is a malicious software designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to computer system. Then number six, a denial of service DOS attacks. It is overloading a target system or network with excessive traffic to make it unavailable to users, distributions, or consumption of explicit content involving minors. And then um, the cyber crime is financial cyber crime illicit activities targeting financial systems and institutions to steal money or valuable financial information from user. Then, uh, now we talk about uh, phishing. Okay, phishing, um, according to the journal entitled Study on Phishing Attacks, to phishing is a cyber crime in which emails, telephone, text, message, 
personally identifiable information, banking details, credit card details, password is being targeted. Phishing is mainly a form of online identify theft. Social engineering is being used by the phisher to steal victims' personal data and uh, the account details. So uh, we can see in this uh, presentation, this is um, the picture, as we can see, how phishing process through the picture. Uh, in the picture, explain step by step how a phishing process. Uh, we can see here uh, attackers, attackers send uh, attackers, or we can uh, call it teaser, sends an email to victim or other communication type that designed to help in attacking the victim. Uh, maybe not only email, but also maybe a text message on a social media. Uh, but the purpose is a uh, communicating type that designed to help in attacking the victim. Uh, then here, victims clicks on the email or on the message and goes to phishing website. Yeah, this website is designed by the attackers, can be like the official website of an organization or another official website uh, so that the victim is not suspicious. Uh, when victims are directed to the website, they may be asked uh, to write down a password or a PIN or our address so that the data can be known or stolen by the attacker. Yeah, uh, attacker collect victims' credentials. Attacker use, uses victims' credentials to access a website or a victim's account. So the attackers not only can steal the personal data from the victims, but also can steal the money or maybe in victim's financial account or using this personal data for another scam. Yeah, we can um, see uh, this, uh, this picture, yeah, uh, attackers and the victims. Here, uh, in these pictures, uh, figure out about the process of piecing. Uh, in Indonesia and maybe also in the world, piecing is one of the most common cyber crimes that occurs and claims many victims. So we have to more carefully with our um, personal data. Uh, especially in this connected world, in, in this connected world, uh, everything uh, can be stolen from us if we not be careful with it. So there are many types of phishing attack. Uh, we go to next slide. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, there is many. Sorry. There is many types of phishing attack. First is deceptive phishing. Uh, deceptive phishing is the uh, when the attackers impersonate a legitimate company and try to steal people personal information or their login password. Um. If we talk about this kind of uh, piecing, this is a most common type of piecing. In this type, uh, the attackers um, can make a fake banking website. Uh, attackers create website that mimic the login pages of popular banks. Uh, then users uh, are directed to these fake sites through PC emails or maybe message in social media where they unwittingly enter their login credential, which are then captured by the attackers. So uh, 
the data will be stolen uh, by the pisser. Uh, this type of phishing also um, pisser may create a fake login pages for social media, uh, maybe Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Users may be tricked into entering their username and password, thinking they are logging into their accounts, but in reality, they are uh, providing their credential to the attackers. Uh, the, uh, another, another example is uh, attackers may create fake version of popular online shopping. Um, Popular online shopping website, unsuspecting user might be lured into these sites through phishing emails promising great deals maybe or promising great discount when user, when user attempts to make purchase, their payment information is harvested by the attackers. It can be uh, very dangerous. Uh, another example uh, in email service, the attackers or pieces may create fake login pages for email service such as Gmail, Yahoo, or Outlook. User who enter their email credential on the on these fake pages may find their account compromised, allowing attackers to access their sensitive emails and contacts. And uh, the worst is attackers may create fake payment portals that resemble those of well-known payment processors like PayPal or, or another uh, website payment. Users who enter their payment information on these fake sites may have their financial details stolen by the attackers. So in the is digitally connected world, we have to uh, very carefully with our data. Uh, and we have spear piecing. Okay, uh, the first is deceptive piecing and then spear piecing. Spear piecing, a type of piecing attack that targets specific individuals or organizations typically through malicious email. Uh, in this kind of phishing, we can have a example here. The goal of a spear phishing is to steal sensitive information such as login credential or infect the target's device with malware. Uh, maybe it's uh, quite same with uh, the first the first type of piecing. Yeah, we have to carefully because pair pieces research their target. So before uh, the attacker um, steal us uh, the data from the victims, uh, they research their targets first. So the attack appears to be from trusted senders in the target's life. A spear phishing email uses social engineering techniques to urge the victims to click on a malicious link or attachment. When the victim completes the intended action, the attacker can steal the credentials of a targeted legitimate user and enter a network undetected. Uh, let let me give an example. Let's say there is a company called XYZ and the attacker wants to steal sensitive information from one of its employees. Uh, maybe we can say John, maybe, yeah, who works in the finance department. Uh, the attackers conduct throughout research on John. Uh, they gather information from social media profiles, company website, and other publicly available source to learn about uh, John's role, colleague, project he's involved in, and any recent company event. 
So uh, the attacker research first, then based on the gathered information, the attacker craft a highly personalized phishing email targeting John. Uh, the email may appear to come from a trusted colleague, supervisor, or even the company's uh, it could refer reference recent project. Uh, maybe uh, John has been working on our upcoming event within the company uh, to make it seem legitimate. So uh, the PC email may use social engineering technique to manipulate John into attacking a specific action. For example, it might claim there's an urgent issue with his account that requires immediate attention, or it could offer a fake promotion or bonus to entice him to click on a malicious link or download an attachment uh, then the email contains a malicious link or attachment that uh, when click or download uh, is some malware on John's computer or prompt him to enter his login credential on a fake website designed to look like the company's internal portal. Uh, one, once uh, John interact with the malicious content, the attacker gains access to his computer, network credentials, or other sensitive information. They can uh, they can use this access to carry out further attacks, such as maybe stealing financial data, uh, initiating fraudulent transaction, or launching ransomware attack against the company. So um, this kind of uh, phishing attack is highly uh, targeted and tailored to exploit specific vulnerabilities or characteristics of the individual and the organization, make it more likely to succeed compared to a generic phishing attack. Okay, and then uh, we have uh, C in clone phishing. Yeah, con phishing is one of phishing attack where a legal or a previously gained email contains the attachment and link share recipients uh, recipients address taken and used to create the same identical or clone email. Uh, the attachment or link within the email is replaced with some external malicious version and then send it to the victims from email address book to appear to come from the original vendor. This technique can be used to uh, pivot indirectly from the infected machine and take all the information or can gain a foothold on another machine. Uh, like the example before, um, we back to John. John received an email from a legitimate source, uh, such as his bank, uh, informing him that there has been suspicious activity on his account and he needs to verify his information to secure his account, and there is cloning email. Uh, the attacker intercepts this email and creates an almost identical copy of it, including logos, formatting, and content. However, the link provided in the email is modified to lead to a fraudulent website controlled by the attacker. The attacker sends the clone email to John, hoping that he will not notice and this Repenses and will click on the link to provide his personal information uh, and maybe John believing the email to be from his bank, click on the link and is taken to the fake website, which closely resembles the legitimate banking website. Uh, then maybe he enter his username and password as requested. The attacker capture the information entered by, uh, by John on the fake website. Uh, well, with this information, the attacker can then access John's bank account, 
steal his phone or engage in further fraudulent activities. Uh, this is a uh, example uh, that clone phishing involve replicating a legitimate email to deceive the victim into providing sensitive information or credentials. The attack released on the trustworthiness of the original email and the confusing nature of the clone version to trick the victim into taking the desired um, action. Yeah, this is uh, three types of phishing attack, uh, like uh, similar but have uh, different things. Okay, next. Um, types of phishing attacks we have walling. Walling attacks uh, hope to extract more valuable classified information by taking down big target. Um, actually, oh sorry. Okay, walling. Uh, walling attack hope to uh, extract more valuable classified information by taking down a big target. Um, okay. Uh, Walling use uh, the same personalized strategy. Uh, Walling uses the same personalized strategy of spear piercing attacks. The difference is a walling attack hope to extract more valuable classified information by taking down the target, which can magnify the damage inflicted upon an organization. Uh, then we have a link manipulation. Uh, when the user open the link, the link open up in the PISER's website. Instead of opening it into the website mentioned in the link, uh, in this type um, in this type of attack, the PISER sent a link to a spoof or malicious website. Yeah, uh, when the user opens that link, the link opens up in the PISER website. Uh, uh, we can say a fake website instead of opening it into the website uh, mentioned in the link. So this is a link manipulation. Then we have voice voice piecing. Uh, so piecing is not about it's not just about um give a message or uh, give a link or uh, give um, maybe fake website for us to click it but uh, the use of redolent phone calls to trick people into giving money or revealing personal information is a voice piecing yeah uh, Phishing or voice phishing is the use of a fraudulent phone, a fraudulent phone calls to trick people uh, into giving money or revealing personal information. Uh, it's a new name for an old problem telephone scams. Uh, phishing or voice phishing frequently involves a criminal pretending to represent a trusted institution, company, or government agency. So we have to carefully uh, with this kind of um, phishing. Okay, next. Okay, so um, how? Sorry. Okay, uh, so how we can do to prevention of phishing attack? Here, here are some types of cybersecurity used to 
prevention of a uh, phishing attack. First is firewalls. Uh, firewalls are defense layers that monitor and control incoming and outgoing internet traffic in a network. They can help prevent unauthorized access uh, to sensitive information. Uh, and second, antivirus and anti-malware. Antivirus and anti-malware programs detect, block, and remove malicious software, including PC. Uh, and then email filtering. Uh, this, involves, uh, this involves using email filters to check and identify suspicious or phishing emails. This, uh, these filters can block suspicious emails before they reach users' inbox. And then we have um, multi-factor authentication or MFA. MFA requires users to provide more than one form of identification to access their accounts. This can reduce the risk of phishing attacks because attackers often cannot access both required authentication factors. And then you are filtering. This tool can prevent users from accessing accessing websites predicted to be phishing or dangerous by blocking access or providing warnings uh, to users. And then uh, connection termination. If a phishing attack is detected, a preventative action may involve terminating the connection between the user and the suspicious source. And uh, seven, software update. Ensuring all software, including web browsers and operating systems, is is always updated to the latest version is also important to reducing the risk of phishing attacks. This is because other software versions often have security vulnerabilities that can be exploited by attackers. Uh, okay, then, uh, from the user side, several things we can do to prevent phishing attacks are we have a number one, guard against spam in this type of prevention. Number two, communicate personal information only via phone or secure website. Number three, do not click on links, uh, download files or open attachment in emails from unknown sender. And number four, sound security policies. And number five, security awareness training. Uh, how we can detection of phishing attacks? Uh, there is some something we can do. Uh, first, use a custom DNS service. Then use your browser's phishing list. Then use sites to check links. Number four, look for secure connections. Number five, uh, look at the domain of URL. And number six, look at the site itself. So we have to check this uh, this kind uh, to detection of phishing attacks. Uh, actually, one of the newest research journals studying phishing prevention has the title Peaky Tower. Pikita or phishing kit attack dataset for phishing website identification. It's also a study about detection of phishing attack. Okay. Uh, Yeah, this is all my presentation. Thank you for this time and the opportunity.
I end my presentation now and uh, back to Novita. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for Miss Serlina. For all participants, if you have any question for the speaker, please add them to the chat or you can raise your hand. Okay, for our first question, we have question from participant in the YouTube, Miss, from Miss Paulina. What are the most pressing challenges and innovative strategy in safeguarding interconnected system against cyber threat, particularly in the context of an increasingly interconnected world and how can industry collaboration and research advancement contribute to addressing this issue? Thank you. The question already read in the room chat. Also, Miss. Okay, uh, but can you send the question? Oh. Okay, um, the question is, what are the most pressing challenges and innovative strategies in safeguarding interconnected system against cyber threat, particularly in the context of an increasingly interconnected world, and how can industry collaboration and resource advancement contribute to addressing this issue? Um, safeguarding interconnected system against cyber threat in an increasingly interconnected world present numerous facing challenges. Some of these challenges include uh, first is complexity of system, and then we can uh, say so AI and I'm uh, sorry. A first complexity of system and then a rapidly evolving threat landscape, supply chain vulnerabilities, and lack of standardization. A complexity of system is when interconnected system often involve a complex web or the of devices, networks, and applications, making it difficult to identify and address vulnerability comprehensively. Uh, rapidly evolving threat landscape uh, when cyber threats are constantly evolving with attackers employing sophisticated tactics to exploit vulnerabilities. Keeping up with these threats requires continuous monitoring and adaption. And then supply chain vulnerabilities and lack of uh, standardization. And then uh, human error and insider threats also become a safeguarding interconnected system against cyber threat. Then uh, innovative strategies to address this challenge um, include first, zero trust architecture. Um, adopting a zero trust approach to security where no entity is trusted by default can help mitigate the risk of insider threats and limit lateral movement by attackers within interconnected system. Then 
uh, maybe we have AI and machine learning, uh, blockchain technology, threat intelligence sharing, and security uh, by design. Um, then industry collaborations and research advancement play a crucial role in addressing this issue. Um, first, we can say uh, investment in research and development. So we can research and develop our uh, cybersecurity technology, then maybe regulatory framework. Government can play a role by establishing regulatory frameworks that incentivize cybersecurity because in our country we don't have a fixed regular uh, regulatory frameworks and then public private partnership yeah edu and then education and workforce development maybe this is my uh, answer i hope you can understand it Okay, thank you for answering. I think it's very clear answer from Miss Charlina. Okay, we will go to, to the second speaker, uh, Professor Norul Hassan, PhD, from the Arunai Engineering College from India. Yeah, for Professor Norul, the time is yours. Thank you. Uh, your face still mute, sir. Your mic, yeah. Yeah. Very good afternoon. Can you hear my voice? Yes, clearly. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Novita for uh, inviting me as a speaker. And then uh, I would like to thank Dr. Joseph, sir, who um, welcomed me for this international webinar. Uh, we'll have a session on cyber security in connected world, right? Uh, we'll start the session now. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Is my screen is visible for you? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, start with the cyber security in a connected world. Uh, myself, uh, Professor Nurul Hassan, the head of the department for uh, computer science, cyber security department, along with the artificial intelligence and data science in Arunai Engineering College, Trivannamalai, Tamil Nadu, which is in India. So what we are going to discuss about this webinar is the first thing is cyber security and its role, the role of cyber security in a connected world, and then how to measure the cyber security is a very big task in the modern world to measure the cyber security. Uh, as I noticed that the before presentation, the someone has asked the question uh, regarding that how to be protect the cyber security or the connected world. Uh, that will be an instant measurement and keep on. We are tracking the cyber security issues in terms of measuring the cyber security risks is one of the factor to reduce the cyber security risk in the connected world. And then that the third one is the importance of cyber security. And then that the fourth one is a cyber attacks in real world. And what kind of cyber attacks is happening in the real world. And then what strategies we have to choose to protect the cyber security attacks. And then how to build the cyber awareness culture among the peoples. This is what we are going to have this session in the international webinar. We'll start with the cyber security in a connected world. Uh, in a sense, it is a technology and this process that is particularly designed to protect the networks. 
and then world the globally now, now we are connected we are connected over the international webinar now it is only possible because of the network it means that interconnect in network that is internet where the devices have been connected the once the devices have been connected the attackers also arise and then they used to damage our network and help they used to perform some unauthorized access through this um, internet work that is network then cyber security is essential for all countries in uh, indonesia and india they have military resources and they have hospital hospital in the sense we are aware from the um past in 2020 covid 19 we are affected in the covid 19 they have a number of people were affected in the covid in that case the hospital lies to people were there uh, hospital having maintained some data of covid patients in that they used attacker attacks the data of through the network and then they collected the details of the patient that is what happened the cyber security attack and then the large corporate requires the cyber security because they have a number of projects like sensitive information and all those project will have in the corp all the corporates so it requires the cyber security the small even a small business also requires some cyber security even in the organization an individual also have the cyber security but without cyber security we cannot suppose to access the network in a right manner otherwise our data will be steal with some other person right if the data is exploited there are a lot of risk um, even excuse me professor yes ma'am um can you can you turn off your uh, i mean sorry can you turn on your camera can you Because... turn on i'm right yeah yeah because your camera is turned off can you turn on your camera uh yeah okay i will turn on can you you mind yeah is this yeah. visible for you yeah 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 okay thank you yeah, i'm sorry to burden you in a no issues yeah now that we have understand that cyber security is let's see what a cia tried is how is related to the cyber security it means that now we are going to perform an audit in the sense the periodic audit only relates that the cyber security threats will be detected so the cia is nothing but a confidentiality integrity and availability that is the confidentiality in the sense the principles of confidentiality i said that only authorized party can access the sensitive information that's the very very first thing so the confidentiality in the sense even uh, you are from the stecom university they have some confidential data that only authorized person should access that particular data otherwise the data will be leaked even the student information also possible to leak to the some other person that will create harm to the students those who are studying in this tech up right the next one is integrity the integrity in the sense that said that only authorized people and means can alter or add the add or remove the sensitive information i already said that in every hospital they used to have some patients information without knowledge of the hospital someone cannot supposed to alter the information or alter the report of that particular patient then an availability then availability is the principles of availability that assert that system function and data must be available on demand according to the agreed upon the parameters where we are in the based on levels of service it means that availability in the sense it should be available for authorized person so otherwise the data will be hidden in the sense the, the attacker may hide the data to access to the authorized person in that case we need to protect such kind of activity that is available to ensuring the availability that is what the security of any organization will start with these three principles that is 
I already said that that confidentiality and integrity and availability. This three factor will help us to protect the cyber security system. And next in the cyber security for beginners, we learn about the CIT that is triad, CIA triad, which have the third the industry standard for computer security since the time of the first manufacture. It it was the very first cyber security pretending activity which used to defend the cyber security attacks then what is the importance of security we all aware how the security will be and what is the importance of the security that today's we are digitally connected we are globally connected over there one cannot ignore the cyber security that's a main thing the one single security breach can lead to expose the personal information of millions of people even i have a sensitive information i have the personal information everyone having the personal information the once our data will be breached over the internet or network that will be very harm for me that will uh, you know, fact in that the fact that it will affect in any kind that's the major thing these breaches have a strong financial impact where the security is more important in the sense in financial aspect and financial companies definitely they should have some security features in terms of making firewall and um, building a strong foundation on the cyber security otherwise it will lose the trust of the customer even we are using amazon and flipkart and alibaba for um, online outsourcing online purchasing so if they lost the trust of the customer no one will place the order in the online shopping that is what they have to ensure so as the financial impact that will create a big huge demand in the industry so we need to protect the financial in terms of cyber security hence the cyber security is very essential to protect the business and individual from the spammers and cyber criminals the criminals are not born in terms of criminals they used to make as a criminal or used to change themselves as a criminal in some situation the only thing is they need some money where they get the money in the sense in financial companies they will get uh, financial data and then they will leak the information of the financial data to the customers to the some other organization to theft the data from the normal person that is what happening in the real world then cyber attacks in the real world that is what the cyber attacks is a attempt by the cyber criminals and hackers or digital adversaries and access a computer network or system usually to alter or steal or destroy the exposed information what is the purpose of attack that is what we need to discuss the only thing is no one can come and steal our data unless otherwise we have a confidential data or else we have a financial related data if i have a data which is related to our country's crucial information attacker straight away attack my network attack my computer otherwise no one will come and steal my data and then what is the another purpose of uh, taking this kind of attack in the sense to destroy the information in the sense uh, criminal used to attack the data in terms of network to destroy the data for criminal records for example in police they may have the record of uh, criminals attacker used to attack that particular network to erase the data which have which is have by the police department and then the exposing the information to leaking to other uh, other sources so uh, second thing is a cyber attacks can target a wide range of victims from individual is to enterprise or even in government sector another thing is the government sector is a mo most crucial point for the cyber attackers cyber attacks attackers mostly focus on the government data even the government having multiple data regarding the uh, common peoples of uh, all over the world 
and then all the sensitive information and what is the next plan of the people and then the military information and defense information and then what kind of strategies they are going to create a big economy of the country that is what the government will have so the target of the attacker is to hack the government sites and steal the data from the government and then when targeting the business and then other organization the hacker goal is usually access the sensitive and valuable the company resources such as intellectual property that is ip and then the customer data or payment related information now in modern day artificial intelligence and data science act as a major role in the connected world so here that what data science will do in the sense they used to collect our data and then they used to provide what the customer required it means collectively they will collect the data after that what customer needs and what is the requirement of the customer and then based on that they will produce some suggested data so in terms of cyber world the cyber criminals attack the data the same thing which is happening in the data science but this is illegally takes the data of the customer and then they used to give to the other peoples they straight away contact you regarding that lottery prizes and then offers and then uh, loan credited so like that they used to target the audience who's actually seeking for money and seeking for some resources in the website so this will be a platform for the cyber attacker to collect the information and then attack the common peoples and then what is happening in the real world what kind of attacks are most commonly in the cyber world that is what ddos attack uh, it's a distributed denial of service attack it's used to compromise someone's computer from that they used to steal the data which is connected over that particular computer that is ddos attack and yahoo was hacked in the, through the online and cyber attack and the adobe the adobe is a platform which used to give some uh, document and then uh, video and audio kind of information uh, through the world that even the attacker wants to attack the adobe from that they can erase or destroy the data and then the password attack obviously uh, the, that is what happening in the from the beginning of the uh, computer where where we used so password attack is still there they used to attack our password and steal the data and then the phishing previously uh, taken that about the elaborately taken that phishing and phishing types so the role of the phishing attack is to attack through the web and then the viruses and ransom virus here the ransom virus in the sense they will use to send some malware that malware in the sense ransomware spyware and adware worms and trojan hars and botnets these are all the most harmful malware in the cyber world and then mitigation strategy for cyber attack the what kind of things we have to do to avoid such kind of attacks from the criminals so very first thing is strong password is obviously we need a strong password even in website also even in uh, zoom and then what are the platform we are now using in that also they they used to set the strong password including the uh, mix of letter like case sensitive like uh, upper case lower case and number and special characters uh, and then uh, hard to guess the thing is the all used to make us a password is our date of birth of mobile number and then whatever we have a lucky number that is what we are used to set as a password uh, that is a st still we have a very big issue for uh, making that password as uh, that is not a strong password then updating the software the you keep your computer or smartphone up to date otherwise we cannot support supposed to survey through in the cyber world because the every updation will rectify the bugs of security now it means that security bugs will be rectified for every uh, every software updation 
if we didn't go for any kind of software updation our bug will be stay in our computer or stay in our smartphone that will create a more vulnerability and that will be a very useful for hacker could exploit our data and then firewall that is the major thing even uh, we supposed to create a firewall that should be more protective for outgoing network traffic the once our firewall is very hard to broke the cyber criminal will not touch us it act as a barrier between our network and potential harmful data from the network whenever you, we used to connect with internet our data will be connected all, all over the world in that case our firewall will act as a bridge between myself and uh, yourself it means that one end to another end it will be act as a wall between us to protect our data and then antivirus still we don't aware about the antiviruses even even we people straight away go for a google and having a and free antivirus what free antivirus does in the sense after uninstalling that particular uh, trial period all antivirus will have 30 days of trial period in free of cost after the 30 days what it does in the sense whatever you have been checked in terms of scan that data will be again it will be spread over to your system that is the major issue the installing antivirus software on your device to detect and remove the malicious software such as the virus and worms and trojan hash such kind of things so uh, be aware that our antivirus should be a licensed one it should be a uh, authentic one it should not spread any kind of new unauthorized antiviruses like such as a malware to our system that another thing is backup up, backuping the data the backup data in the sense regularly we should take our backup of important file uh, in terms of cloud or otherwise in our local disk uh, the thing is we should take the data as backup in case of need sometimes the data will be erased in the sense the crucial information will be recovered in the cloud as well as our local host this ensure you to recover your information if it is compromised or lost due to cyber attack this is what i am keep on insisting that our data should be a protective and then our data should protect by ourselves and then multi factor authentication this is a very big thing the enabling the multi factor authentication whenever possible this add ons an extra layer of security by requiring two or more forms of verification to access your account for an example some hacker used to hack your information straight away they don't go for it because of you have multi factor authentication if you if they broke one factor and another second thing they they needs to break otherwise they didn't compromise our system is very easily so multi factor authentication will act as a major role for protecting our sensitive information then awareness training awareness training means that educate yourself and your employees about the common cyber threats such as the phishing emails and social engineering tactics and knowing to lock out for can help to prevent the attack it means that the phishing emails are regularly coming even though if i go for any kind of google search as right away they used to get my emails and then straight away they used to send some emails that is a phishing mail that will collect my information in terms of sending some spam and phishing mails so we should give training to the people for about the cyber and the cyber criminals that will be a very big factor to protect the cyber security through the connected world and then the limited access the only give access to the sensitive information or system those who need it for their job otherwise you cannot allow to access any kind of data
in case of need only you have to allow to access the data otherwise you should not give any kind of access or privilege to anyone else to access the data that is a limited access that you can better protect yourself and your digital asset from the cyber attacks and then information disclosure bug so this is a very big issue nowadays and information disclosure bug refers to security vulnerability where an application or system in advertisely reveals the sensitive information to unauthorized user i will tell you with the small example everyone having the website nowadays the without website we cannot sustain in the digital world am i right so in digital world the all those the information will be kept inside the website even in our techcom all the information regarding the university and all the information which is relevant to the faculty members as well as the student everything will be stored in the website so how our website should be in the sense our should, our website should be more secured one our website is globally accessible so anyone can access our website so all our information we kept in our website so we should ensure our website details are the secured one otherwise the hacker can easily get our data or steal our data from the website itself even our images our video lectures and then our student information our student lectures student videos the whatever we have that will be easily accessible by the cyber criminals so we have to ensure that the information disclosure should be very secure it is also known as the information leakage our information will be leaked only from our side the thing is we kept our information in the website so we are responsible to protect our information whether they are in the safe place so otherwise any one can access or any one can leak our information when a website is unintentionally reveals this sensitive information to its user so the information disclosure occurs when a system exposes the sensitive data such as our password information and then personally identifiable information it means that our images our medical information our information in the sense our personal information that all things will become under the personal identifiable information and then the financial records the financial record in the sense uh, the fees information and then the payroll information of the employee all those information will be leak or system configuration details to the unauthorized user they can easily collect our ip address and then our resources and what we existingly have and then that the danger of leaking the sensitive or user information is the business data and fairly observable it means that easily disclosing the technical information can something be just as serious and we'll look at what kind of information is more secure and what information we need to place in a secure manner so the sensitive information uh, exposes the refers and cyber security risk where confidential or private data and unintentionally exposed to the unauthorized individual or system so the sensitive information exposure can involve the various types of data that is the data which have the limited the credit card informations and then the social security numbers obviously the medical records and password and trade details and property of business informations okay then exposure of sensitive information can result from the vulnerability in software even though when we are installing our software they used to get some uh, authentication from us it means that did you agree the policy of the software we straight away the tick and accept all the um, 
things which is existingly in in software but how many of you are studying all the existing information and what security policies are there but no, no one i think no one is perfectly noticing all those things so while installing the software also our sensitive information will be leaked and then misconfiguring systems and weak access control and adequate the encryption in secure network transaction network transaction in the sense the paying any kind of fees or paying any kind of money through the email or else paying through the websites so that is what the insecure network transaction and improper handling of data by the employees so the every company will have employees or every organization will have the employees they have employee details and uh, employee information so it should be in secured manner or it will be hand over to the third party in our organization we have employees our employees information will goes to the some other organization in the sense it is very useful for that particular organization to contact our organization from here to there so that is what we need to maintain our employee details and then the expose of sensitive information can we have the serious consequences and include the identity theft and financial fraud and reputing damages and regularity of penalties and loss of intellectual property and legal liabilities it can also undermine the trust among the customer everyone has customer even we have customer we have our reputation so we if we lost the reputation from the customer we cannot pull back from the uh, reputation from the customer so the thing is we need to maintain that trust among the customers so our data whenever we feel our, our data is secure then the customer will trust us our partner will trust us and our stakeholder will trust us otherwise they won't trust us because the whatever information we have that will be not a secure in the sense no one will ready to trust us thus the sensitive information exposure then cyber hygiene practice and how we need to maintain all those information in the secure connected environment so the personal in the sense the self effectivenessly and knowledge awareness and social in the sense the organization structure should be and then awareness and the training and then social barriers and technical barriers that we need to ensure that and then the industrial trust and awareness of the risk and threat awareness and when we are globally connected over that particular environment we need to ensure that social norms and low budget priority and less technical complexity and then the difficulty by using the cyber tools and then while using the iot it is very easy to access by the cyber criminals so whenever we use iot devices we need to protect our device in terms of communication network and communication on privacy and then the business privacy so exploitation of cyber hygiene practice for maintaining a secure connected environment the tips is the creating a so strong password and keeping the software up to date and avoiding the suspicious link and emails and importance of the regular data backup that we have uh, seen in the previous slides then building a cyber aware culture so what we need to do is we need to build a cyber awareness among our peoples so in terms of align the security awareness with the external compliance and identify the key of cyber security behaviors and establish a cyber campaign network and then that to develop a brand for a cyber team so we need to construct a team that should develop a brand for a cyber and then that a build a cyber security hub so in that the importance of training to the individuals is to recognize and respond to the cyber threat effectively and then that more or less the strategies for promoting the 
cyber security awareness in the schools colleges and workplace and then various community for creating the awareness through the cyber aware culture thank you thank you one and all okay thank you thank you for professor noru okay uh for we have question from participant in the zoom from miss dwi sapto what aspect of cyber security that are often considered particularly important for maintaining and why the reason yeah thank you yeah the only thing is as i said the earlier the to ensuring the cyber security we need to create a secure firewall the without firewall no one can touch through the network and then making our network as more and more confidential and more secure in terms of making regular periodic auditing so cyber security auditing will act as a major role from that we may know that how secure our site and our network and then that the how to protect against the future attacks like uh, the world will be in present in future generation will be in ai so we cannot defend ai so we may protect from the ai in we can supposed to use the ai in a uh, irregular manner it means for criminal activities also we can able to use ai i am not telling that ai will be for criminals but criminals unauthorizedly access the artificial intelligence tool for cyber attacks so whenever we go for a regular periodic auditing so from that we may know that what is the status of the present network and then how securely we may protect against the future defense from the various attacks okay thank you and then the second question in the face of exciting cyber threat and the exposition explanation grow of interconnection device what proactive strategy do you recommend for organization to fortify their cyber security defense and mitigate risks effectively while also ensuring resilience in increasingly interconnected world thank you yeah that is what we need to ensure that our information disclosure bugs i already said that the information disclosure whether our data will be in more protective one and then we need to give some uh, practice to the uh, consumers and customers and our students too regarding the cyber issues what is currently happening and then uh, building how to build a secure uh, cyber uh, Uh, cyber factors and then how securely we need to protect and then the making uh, our environment or campus or connected device will be how secure it should be the danger for leaking the sensitive information through only by the web so we need to ensure that our service provider or our network are more secure so whenever we we are very aware about the cyber when we used to be a secured and protective one so what i am suggesting is we need to give or we need to build a cyber awareness okay thank you for answering i think is very clear answer from professor ha okay thank you so much for professor noru and we will go to, to the last speaker mr eresonogi from oromia state university estimar yeah for mr ereso the time is yours thank you Thank you, Navita Mulan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Miss Navita, I think Mr. Ereso is not in the Zoom yet. Uh, I will try for the call him. Just a moment, please. All right.
Okay, thank you for waiting. I think for Mr. Ereso have a technical issue. He will join in the tomorrow webinar in the webinar event. Okay. Yeah, Miss Kinan, the bantu link absent. Okay, before I close this event for all participants, please open your camera. I will take a picture on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you. Thank you for your keen cooperation. Finally, we come to the end of webinar today. We would like to thank you for all the speaker for the wonderful information and sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for all participants. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future with Arunai Engineering College. Yeah, the webinar for today and here. We hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you so much for everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for this opportunity.